Welcome to Faster, Smarter, Greener Digital Innovations for Airports. I'm joined today by Olivier Jankovec, who is Director General of ACI Europe, uh, and also by Andreas Boschen, who is uh, Executive Director of the CESAR Joint Undertaking. So for people who are running airports uh, across Europe, Andreas, tell us what CESAR is and how it's relevant to airport management. Thank you. Pleasure being here with both of you. Uh, I'm running the CESAR joint undertaking, which is a European private-public partnership with 55 members, and we are investing and we are undertaking air traffic management research. We are producing, we are delivering on the digital European sky. Mm -hmm. And we need airports. Airports are an essential part, and I'm very pleased that we have so many airports members in our joint undertaking. So I think 11 airports groups are members, Absolutely. is that right, of the, Absolutely. of the CESAR joint undertaking. So Olivier, how does that, so there is obviously a broad piece about the single European sky, the digital European sky. How does that translate into innovations for individual airports? Well, I think the departing point is, you know, why are we interested as airport in ATM reform in the single sky? Mm -hmm. And maybe I can give you a, a, a kind of image about that. Mm -hmm. uh, because running an airport is essentially like um, investing in developing and, and operating an, an assembly line mm -hmm. in a factory. Uh, the problem is that you don't decide alone about the speed at which your assembly line is going to run. This is largely influenced and sometimes even decided by other factors, other actors. Yeah. And one of the primary actors that influences the speed of our assembly line is air traffic management. So for us, getting truly efficient, seamless air traffic management means we can operate the airport in the best possible way for all passengers with all the efficiencies we need to achieve. So that's why we are very keen on CESAR 3, CESAR GDU, and that's why we have a direct interest in getting better integrated with air traffic management. And indeed such an interest between the two organisations that you've set up an award, a digital innovation award for airports in this field. And Olivier was won this year by London City Airport. Tell me a bit about their innovation and why it won the award. Well, it's, it's the digital tower at London City Airport. I think it was the first airport to implement this. Mm. That means that actually you don't necessarily need to have a physical tower and all the old-fashioned processes in terms of controlling movements at the airport. Uh, you can do that through digital solutions, even remotely. And, uh, and that means you're better connected through all the processes involved in airport operations and air traffic management. So what are the, yeah, and right, no, please, if, if I can gain, come in, and it's very good, this award given to, to London City, and basically this is one of our success stories for airports, uh, remote towers and, and uh, even multiple remote towers where you have a center from which uh, tower controllers are controlling different regional airports, and what has started as a concept for regional airports is now expanding and disseminating across Europe and bigger airports like uh, London City are taking it over. Yeah. But this is really the way we would like innovation to, to go from research into deployment and into really market out, uh, outward. And what are the benefits for London City? Obviously, this is a big project for an airport to undertake. What are the benefits to them in their business from that innovation? Well, uh, I think they have taken an investment decision, so they have made their cost uh, calculations mm -hmm. and they have seen that investing in this technology is better than maintaining the physical tower. And this is what we see across uh, different places in Europe uh, at smaller airports, but more and more also bigger airports. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look now, Olivier, you will comment on, but if now an airport operator is looking into, into in, investing into a tower, he might consider that there are digital solutions which are more efficient and less cost-intensive than, than physical towers. 
Yeah, I think the benefits are multiple for the airport yeah. in terms of you know uh, more seamless operations, uh, uh, quicker decision making, yeah. uh, certainly, better alignment with all the stakeholders uh, across across the the airport facility, mm. and of course uh, cost reduction down the line. As, right. as Andreas said, said uh, you know it's an investment decision in the in the first place. So that means you need to get approval from your board when you are an airport CEO to make that investment and reassure your board that indeed also in economic terms you'll get the return on mm. that investment. For sure. And of course another driver, Andreas, in the aviation industry as a whole and particularly for airports is sustainability, mm. particularly decarbonisation. There's some research that's been going on at Paris Orly Airport, I think, in right. this neck of the woods, tell us a, tell us what they've been doing. There. Yes, I mean they are doing lots of things on, on uh, a sustainability for aviation. Also, we are very pleased that many airport members are engaged. But let's pick up the example of mm. Oli. What have they done in Oli? They wanted to have a single place, a dashboard where all the different data from sensors are coming together, and for the first time they know what is the environmental performance of Oli Airport when it comes to noise, when it comes to local air emissions, when it comes to CO2. And this is a starting point. Once you know what you are, what is your daily output, you can really think about what investment, uh, what each investment will bring as benefits to reduce the environmental impact of the airport. Mm -hmm. And they were so in, um, successful in Oli that now Rossi is going to copy it and they're also promoting it to other airports and we might see environmental dashboards more and more and the general public is interested in knowing that airports are improving their environmental performance. I think for you this is very important to show also these kind of uh, initiatives. Because airports have so many different stakeholders, don't they, Olivier? So of course for airports to contribute to Europe-wide progress is important, but they also have local people in that area concerned about things like noise, Sure, uh, things sure. like pollution. I, I think we, you know, as businesses, clearly, uh, as we're facing all the climate emergency, we, we need not just to earn our license to grow, but actually to earn our license to keep operating. Mm -hmm. And I think now, clearly, sustainability, and in particular, decarbonization, is, is, is at the very core of airports business strategies. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you said rightly, the difficulty is that we don't control the way our facilities are being used by all the operating stakeholders. So a big part actually of, of the value for us of, of Cesar is actually um, a concept like total airport management, mm. uh, where basically you allow the airport to coordinate and to interact better with all these operational stakeholders yeah. to drive efficiency and make sure that everybody has the same set of data, works on the same set of data, mm. interpret that data in the same way so that we all take decisions that are aligned. And, and that can mean people in the same physical place, can't it? In, a, in an, uh, what they call an APOC, I think, an airport. APOC is key. Uh, 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 airport yes. operations yes. Center. center. Yes. So that those executives from the airport are in the same place and can react to changes in circumstances. Absolutely. Together. Absolutely. Uh, and, and those already in use, I think, Andreas at Heathrow. Brussels. Yes, and there is even uh, uh, from the European Union a mandatory deployment uh, over the next years. This is part of what we call the Common Project One, and I think even it's in the interest of airports, so they will also voluntarily uh, invest in it. It is really crucial to bring all the actors, air side, land side, together and share the data, and if need be, decide together. That is that he helps to improve for the passenger, for the cargo, the the throughput, if I may call it like this, in an right. airport. Because Olivier. The passenger may never see the inside of a, an APOM. Certainly difficult. <laughs> <laughs> for, for very good reasons. Uh, we don't just let people walk in and out of those, those places. But they will feel the benefits, won't they? Oh, this, yes. this is all in the interest of the passenger. Yes. yes, everything, I think, you know, everything that Cezanne does is really focused on making the, the journey of the passenger better. And I think that's a bit the hidden beauty of Cesar mm. when, when you're a passenger is that Cesar is driving a lot of research, innovation and deployment of solutions and new processes 
that are all in the end about making the life of the passenger better during air travel. Right. Because that's about you know reducing delays, mitigating disruptions, yeah. improving the flow of passengers and bags. Yeah. Uh, so all, all of this down the line improves the passenger experience. And that is helping the passenger also to know that they are having a lower environmental impact, Definitely. ultimately. Definitely. We have decided now uh, to make a new flagship in our program, which is called Multimodality and Passenger Experience. And this is clearly putting the passenger at, at the center. I think a passenger is expecting predictability. He wants to know whether he will land at the destination on time and he wants to have a good service, where is my baggage and so on. And we have the data. There's a lot of data in the mm -hmm. system and we have just to find the tools, the application that on the iPhone, the passenger gets reliable information and feels comfortable feels at ease at an airport and enjoys his travel experience. And we are looking at this also in a door-to-door -door perspective. Right. Because passengers arrive at an airport and they will leave to an airport. So there is a plan, for example, in Europe by 2050 that all um, flights uh, in intra-Europe can be done in four hours door to door, yeah. not airport to airport, door to door. And this means, of course, integration of the way to get to the airport, the yeah. way to leave the airport and so on. And this is also one of our research initiatives. Now. And that may surprise people if they haven't checked in with Cesar's work for a while, that it, it's much beyond air traffic management now. Yes, but uh, it makes sense. Uh, Olivier, you just said, uh, in the end, we are serving our clients, our end user. These are passengers and, uh, mm. and uh, they, they will benefit from it. So it is, of course, door to door. It, not everything in air, air traffic management is door to door, but yeah. uh, air traffic management is in the middle of it. We right. want to know whether all the passengers can arrive on time yeah. and so on and so forth. If they're connecting flights and so on. So uh, this we need to know also to handle air, air traffic management. I think there's also a consensus in the uh, membership of the uh, CESAR joint undertaking that this is, uh, this is important research and mm. not out of scope. It is in scope. For sure. And if I'm an airport manager, a CEO or a COO, and I'm interested in what I'm hearing in this video. How do I get involved? What are, my, what are my next steps? You call Olivier, we could be one uh, starting point. Uh, you, can, uh, you can look at our website, you can consult the 11 airport operators which, uh, which, are, which are there, but ACI is doing a very good job there also. Yeah. And we have a catalog of more than 100 solutions already available. Not all of them will be relevant for airport, airports, I'm sorry, but those for airports are clearly tagged, so it's easy to identify. Yeah. And then if you don't find Olivier, you call me and I will organize uh, with my staff the right the right approach right. but uh, we have really been good contacts with airports and we are we are we are positive about the interest of airports in our solutions and it really is i looked at the website earlier it really is a cat uh, catalog it is isn't it? It, it, it is these are detailed it's that catalog some of them off the shelf solutions yes. but th these are things that people come up against in their jobs yeah. mm -hmm. every day this is not some no this is not research which in five or ten years time will bear fruit. Some of it is research that will take time, but some of it is already available. We have, we have the process. entire innovation pipeline. We have a long-term vision, the digital European sky by age 2050, but we are, already have solutions ready and I'm pleased to see they implemented at the airport. I have visited Roissy a couple of uh, weeks ago mm -hmm. and they showed me interesting things, uh, management of vehicles in the airport, that they now know precisely where each vehicle is and the vehicle can also get a warning uh, if there is something wrong and, and there's a conflict between the plane and the vehicle. Sounds again trivial, but it is so important and the people were so committed to implement it and they said this brings us benefits in our daily operational right. work. And this is what I want to hear. And you mentioned the digital European sky. Talk a bit more, Andreas, about why that is important, why it's important for Europe as a whole to have a single digital sky. Because what do we have now is, in terms of technology, quite often very old. Radar, uh, voice communication. We have a growing interest in capacity. We will, have, we will see more and more flights. Mm -hmm. We are recovering from COVID. We have now an economic crisis. It might not immediately, next year, the year after, but all the predictions, all the forecasts tell us we will have more airplanes. We will have more drones. 
We will have new types of vehicles flying in the air. So the, air, the airspace management will become more and more tricky. And the only solution to manage our airspace in, a, in an efficient, in a cost efficient, in a sustainable, in a green way is going via, via digitalization. And that is therefore we are investing so much in a digital European sky, where again, data is at the center. There is a lot of data. We have to organize the data. We have to share at the right moment with the right people. There is always the strategic and, and, and pre-tactical planning mm -hmm. the day before and so on. But you also have to, sh we also will share more and more data in, during operations between the pilot and the controller. Very important, the approach controllers, how will they align the planes? Right. What is the right separation, the right distance to land from a green perspective to make the flight as sustainable, as green as possible? So this, for all of this, we need digital data. And how, again, Olivier, does that play out in the airports industry? What are the benefits from that single European sky well, I, I think for us, um, and it's a bit different from, from, from in the air, in the sky, mm -hmm. on the ground, clearly, uh, we do have, um, you know, very clear uh, capacity limitations, mm -hmm. and, and we know that in Europe it's going to be increasingly difficult, if at all, to develop new physical capacity at existing airports. Mm -hmm. So in that context, maximizing the use of the existing capacity we have Mm. squeezing the lemon as much as we can, in other words, yeah. is key for us because this is the only way we are going to be able to keep developing air connectivity and to fulfill our societal role to bring people together. And clearly, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of, of, of this conversation, um, when we have capacity limitations in the sky, they just had up and translate into capacity limitations on the ground. So right. by unlocking more capacity and by allowing also more new users to use airspace capacity, that translates also into more efficiencies and, and better use of capacity on the ground. Let's talk a little bit about the C word, COVID. So obviously that was a huge spanner in the works of the aviation industry now recovering, sometimes recovering at a remarkably quick pace in terms of demand, in terms of traffic. Olivier, has COVID and the, the financial implications of COVID, has that affected airports' ability to invest in these kinds of projects? Well, I think you're, you're putting the finger really on one of our major concerns at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, because yes. uh, Europe's airports have had generally limited financial support from governments through COVID. So they had to tap into the debt market. And if you look at debt and liabilities from Europe's airports today, it's 60 billion euro bigger than what it was for COVID in, in two, at the beginning of 2020. Yeah. Uh, so of course this is we see this as a big risk in terms of our ability to invest because a lot of the revenue we will generate in the coming years will be used to repay that debt. Mm. And that means less money available to invest. But yeah. I think this is also another beauty of Caesar is that you know with Caesar comes EU financing. Uh, there is significant public EU financing available for CESAR solutions and that certainly uh, gives me hope that you know it will help airports still making the commitments they need to make yeah. uh, uh, to, to participate into CESAR and to deploy the CESAR solutions. Andreas? Yes, indeed. Uh, the VR research uh, program which uh, has EU funds available for research but also for deployment. Uh, this is a, a strong point of of, uh, of our program. I fully agree with Olivier that uh, COVID has hit the aviation sector extremely hard. Uh, airlines, airports, ANSPs and uh, airports are from their organization, their ownership structure, of course, very, very much uh, affected. We are grateful that uh, that still airports are so committed uh, and, and active in our, in our different uh, projects. And what we try to do with our project is to make them as deployable as possible and to present also the business case which allow the airport decision makers to, to see rather quickly what is in for them and why this investment will make sense. And, uh, and uh, the aviation is a, is a network. So yeah. even if you have to invest in a local solution, there are always network effects which will contribute to the, to the entire network system. And this is also important to have in mind, and I know the airports have this in mind. They are part of and parcel of a bigger aviation community. And to talk the bottom line, there is a, a certain pop 
of EU funding which may be available to help with both the research and the deployment of these technologies. That's correct. There is. Which will be music to the to the ears. Of, well, that's that, 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 that's really that's really essential. I think uh, you know if, if if you want because um, some of the CSR solutions that we have to deploy and some of them are mandatory for deployments yes. actually uh, for airports. Um, their benefit is is generally more obvious in terms of benefits to the network, mm. the efficiency of the overall aviation network. But the local business case, sometimes in terms of, of, of the benefits, is, is a bit more remote. Yes. Uh, so it can be difficult for airport CEOs to go to their board and say, listen, I'd like to do this project, it's part of CISAR deployment. And the board is asking what's in it for us. And you know, the CEO will respond, well, this is a bit more for the network than for us locally. Yeah. And this is where the, the, the EU financing mm -hmm. helps. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, still ensuring the commitment of the Air Force to, to invest. And let's talk a little bit about the environmental, the sustainability advantages of having that more digital network, that more efficient network. We talked about how the so noise and pollution at individual airports. On a European scale, there are some big savings to be made in terms of CO2, aren't there? Absolutely. If you look at the um, the current flight patterns across Europe, uh, they are they are not flying the optimal flight trajectory. This is clear. And there are good reasons. You might have weather conditions, you might have military uh, zones and whatever. So we will never fly the optimum, the theoretical optimum. Mm -hmm. But we can certainly bring the current flight trajectories much closer to the optimum. And there, uh, this will also be a big benefit for, for the environment because it means less fuel burn, less CO2 emissions, less delays. And there is technology. This is again, this is the trajectory based operations. This is a dialogue the data exchange between the plane flying and the different right. air traffic control centers because it is not one controller from one airport to the other. There are different controllers involved and they hand it over from one sector to the other. Yeah. And the more we have a trajectory-based uh, um, schedule, which is up to date uh, in real time, where the data between the plane and the controller is always up to date, will allow us to, to gain efficiency. And the, the big figure is 10%. Can we can ADM contribute to minus 10% CO2 emissions? This is our aim, and we, we are working very hard to get into this area. Um, so finally, let's think about the future. If we three were sitting here together next year, or in five years' time, Andreas, what progress would you like to be reporting in this initiative? Well, research is always a bit slow, so it would take the five years, if you, yeah. if, if, if you don't mind. Are there some quick wins for next year? Yes, I mean, again, the, the catalog is there, the solutions are there, and we know that some of them are implemented, so we have, we'll have uh, some quick wins, but uh, in the perspective of the next five years, I would really think that we will have made progress at individual airports when it comes to the collaboration between the different actors. This is then the door-to-door -door passenger uh, centric uh, view, but we will also have uh, better um, made, made progress in what I was calling the green flight pass and so on. There, there also we have to say that Eurocontrol the network manager is doing a lot to uh, to arrange and to simplify uh, the sectors and the routes across Europe and our research will also help to make flights in Europe uh, uh, greener and also with, uh, with less delays. So I think we'll, and we will probably manage many more flights in five years. So that's also the capacity issue will have to be uh, tackled mm -hmm. by them. Olivia, crystal ball. Uh, crystal ball, I think for us, uh, it's it's about you know the better integration of airport operation into air traffic management. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope, and I'm I'm pretty sure we will make significant progress uh, on that over the next five years, thanks to the Caesar solutions that are off the shelves. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, lo looking uh, down down the line, um, I also hope that we will see more airports, uh, you know, uh, getting involved into Caesar. Uh, we've seen already tremendous interest and more and more interest from airports, mm, yes. and that notwithstanding the COVID crisis, and right. I think that's Indeed. really Indeed. positive and encouraging. It is. I think the next step is really how, how the CISAR solutions can be further tailor-made and deployed at smaller airports, yeah. because it's true in the beginning, we, we've seen obviously the very big, very high interest of the big hubs. We are now seeing the more medium-sized airports yes. coming in, 
the next step will be going trickling down to, to the smaller regional airports. If people want more information, the CESAR website is cesarju.eu. It is indeed. S-E-S-A-R-J-U dot E-U. Absolutely. And if you scroll down to publications, the solutions catalog is there. It's ready to be downloaded. And Olivia, the usual ACI Europe website, aci-europe.org. Correct. And people can pick up the phone. ACI Always. members, of course, can pick up the phone to Always. ACI Europe. Always. We're uh, here to serve them and to plug them into CESAR. Looking forward. <laughs> Andreas Boschen and Olivia Yankovac, thanks for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.